The availability of a wide variety of open source data engineering frameworks and ML pipeline toolkits makes it difficult to actually understand real world usage and learning curves. We may get a theoretical understanding through project websites and blog posts, but what does this software look like in actual practice? In this video, we'll dive into the world of Kubeflow with a simple hands-on example. To minimize the setup work, we'll also leverage Google Cloud's Vertex AI managed pipelines for execution. Our pipeline is going to use files that we've stored on Google Cloud Storage. We're also going to make use of Google's speech-to-text API within this pipeline. We will walk through the code, which is available in the description of this video, as well as the Cloud Console to understand these concepts. So let's jump right in. Let's create a repository for the code. And then within this repository, we really just need a single pipeline Python file for now. Let's build out the components we need for an example pipeline, and we'll talk about these concepts. First up, in Kubeflow, we have this concept of container components, which allow you to use a Docker image and specify commands and arguments such that you have an atomic, containerized component in your pipeline versus something more like Python code. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to use the Linux server image for our pipeline and then run an ffmpeg command to convert an mp4 file to a WAV file. We will be getting a video from cloud storage and using it to generate an audio file. Now, when we run this pipeline, we're going to need things like the DSL module. So we will run some Kubeflow pipeline imports here. Once we've built out the pipeline, we'll be able to run this Python script to be able to create a pipeline.yaml file, which we can then run on Google Cloud. We're going to need a couple more constants defined at the top here. Specifically, we will define a Google Cloud storage bucket and an MP4 file to extract the audio from. Then we'll be creating a transcript of this WAV file. So this is one type of component in Kubeflow, but we can actually have others. For example, we'll use a more standard Python component to run the transcription processing, and specifically, we'll use the Google Cloud Speech API for that. With this type of component, you do still have an image here, but you're defining the logic in your Kubeflow pipeline. You can also have things like additional packages that you install to power these components, such as custom libraries, whether from Google Cloud or elsewhere. So all we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking the WAV file that we created from the previous step and run a speech-to-text operation on that. Then we'll be saving the file. I'll talk a little bit about the approach to files in Google Cloud Storage in just a moment. Next up, and really lastly, we need to define the pipeline itself. In this pipeline, which we're going to call transcript extraction, we're going to first run the MP4 component using an imported artifact. We already have an MP4 file that we obtained from Wikimedia Commons, and we have that in our bucket. We're going to import that as an artifact in Kubeflow pipelines. Now, Kubeflow pipelines offer a few ways to manage data between tasks. The first approach is to return values like you would normally see in Python functions. For example, if you have a short text string, a dictionary or a list, you could just return that using the standard Python syntax at the end of your components and use that as an output in this format for your subsequent tasks. If you have an output from a task that is then an input to another task, that will automatically define a bit of a flow and a dependency there. Of course, we can have branching, fanning out, and fanning in with these tasks. Another approach is to use artifacts that are defined in your function definition. For example, we have this input data set to the MP4 to wave component. We could also have output data sets that allow us to use the platformization of artifact handling in Kubeflow and pass artifacts between components. This is especially useful for data sets and models as it allows us to infer lineage from artifacts. For example, when you have machine learning models, you can automatically see what data sets these came from if you're using these native approaches to artifacts in your Kubeflow pipelines. The other approach for defining flow and dependencies is with the after method as shown here. We're indicating that the speech to text task has to happen after the MP4 to wave task has been completed. 
So with that, we have our pipeline largely defined here. Let's go ahead and run the compilation command at the end, which will generate a YAML file that we can run on our Kubeflow pipelines within Google Cloud. The only setup that we've already taken care of is creating the bucket. If we go to Google Cloud Storage and switch to the right project, you'll see the bucket that we're going to use and the example MP4 file in it. Now, if you haven't created the bucket yet, you can use almost entirely the default settings. Name your bucket, but otherwise you can use the defaults for region, storage class, public access prevention, and so on. After creating the bucket and uploading the MP4 file, we'll also need to enable the required APIs. If you go to Vertex AI, there will be a button to enable recommended APIs if you're new to using Vertex in your project. Similarly, we need to make sure we have the speech-to-text API enabled. It'll prompt you if you don't have that API enabled yet. Let's go to Pipelines then and see if we can run the pipeline that we just created. We'll need to install some required packages before compiling our pipeline. For the Kubeflow package installed with pip, we're going to specify the pre command here, since the version 2.0 for Kubeflow pipelines is forward looking and has some great functionality, but is technically not a stable major version yet. With the YAML file created, we can now run it by importing it from cloud storage or uploading it manually. Choose a cloud storage location or upload the specification from your machine, then move on to the execution specification. In this pipeline run, an important advanced option to keep in mind is that caching is enabled by default. That means if a task in your pipeline completes successfully, a cached version of that task will be used in future pipeline runs. Be sure to disable caching if for some reason you need to rerun tasks. In this example, if we had a successful conversion of an MP4 file to a WAV file, we would want to continue using that WAV file for multiple runs of our speech-to-text API invocation. After submitting the pipeline, we can walk through the console as well as some additional important concepts for Kubeflow pipelines. First off, you see the concept of artifacts through importer and artifact nodes. The importer is a way to bring in artifacts that are not created in your Kubeflow pipelines. The associated code for importing the MP4 file is provided here. In this artifact, we have a name and URI, which are core to the artifact definition. An interesting feature of Kubeflow pipelines is the automatic mounting of buckets to the file system at the slash GCS directory. This provides an easy way to work with files stored in cloud storage without having to manually handle GCS code and GSutil commands for syncing files between remote cloud storage buckets and a local file system. The access pattern for bucket objects will be slash GCS instead of specifying the GS file protocol in tasks. Moving on, we have the MP4 to wave task where we're creating an audio file from the MP4 file using the FFmpeg library. Then we're using that WAV file for a Google Cloud speech-to-text API operation. Examining these tasks in the code, we see that for the conversion, we're using an FFmpeg Docker container and standard flags, arguments, inputs, and outputs for that FFmpeg operation. For the speech-to-text operation, we're using the Python SDK from Google Cloud, specifying parameters such as audio encoding, sample rate, and the speech-to-text model to use. Once we get the result, we write it to our Google Cloud storage bucket. After completing the pipeline run, we can see our new assets in Google Cloud Storage, including the WAV file and the text transcript. The transcription can be viewed and further processed if needed. These pipelines certainly shine most when performing machine learning tasks. You can add accelerators like GPUs and TPUs to speed up machine learning work, and some abstractions in Kubeflow are focused on things like datasets feeding into machine learning models. 
While Kubeflow is a flexible framework that can be used for non-machine learning data engineering workflows, it is most suited for applications involving machine learning. Also keep in mind that when you're using caching for Kubeflow pipeline runs, deleting an artifact in your storage won't trigger a reaction. Try to keep the artifacts created by Kubeflow in these folders for consistent processing and pipelines. That way your pipelines reflect your storage objects and vice versa. We hope this video was helpful and we'll keep an eye on the comments section for any questions. Thank you for watching.